Testing, testing, one, two. All right, we're live. Hi, guys, and welcome back to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and everything about the metaverse. Today, very, very exciting video, as I've clocked in more than 30 hours and will give you my review and first impressions, well, not first impressions, but impressions after 30 hours plus of the Pico Neo 3 Link, comparing it to the, specifically the HP Reverb T2. So the question is, is it time to put down the HP Reverb D2 as the Pico Neo 3 Link offers both apps inside of the VR headset, which basically means you do not need a PC to run this thing. It's got everything natively with a ton of apps, very cool headset. Or you can also, of course, stream your favorite VR titles from your PC wirelessly or using a cable called the full KDB cable. So this is what we're gonna be talking about today. The graphics, the resolution, the gameplay feel, as opposed to part one, which you must go and watch, which talks about all the hardware and the exterior part of the actual headset. So without further ado, let's first of all, go inside of the headset, inside of the home, because there has been an update very recently, and I just wanted to touch on, on some of the things there before we talk about the actual games themselves. All right, guys, so we're inside of the home. So as I mentioned before, there was actually an update made yesterday, and I'm really happy that I waited until I installed the update in order to do today's video. Now the microphone you can hear is the microphone coming directly from the Pico Neo 3 link. And basically before the update, what had happened, and this is also what some of the other YouTubers had also mentioned, is that there was some kind of warping that was going on inside of the headset where basically none of the things that you can see at the moment felt proportionate, they felt a bit blown up or a bit condensed. It was a little strange. Um, it made things look like you were looking at something cross-eyed. It was just very weird. And then yesterday the update occurred and now everything looks completely proportionate inside of the home environment. So I'm happy to report back that I have nothing to say in terms of bugs inside of the home environment. Everything now is completely 100% proportionate and everything looks really, really good. It looks very comfortable. You can also walk around inside of your your home environment. Now there was before the ability to change the home's environment background, which was basically, let me go towards it, it was here. So what you could do before, there was like a carousel of different images and you could click, 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 click. There was about, I don't know, about six or seven different home environments from all types of different home environments. But they decided to remove these from an update that occurred about one month ago, way before the Pico Neo 3 link was actually available, uh, which was during the Pico Neo 3 Pro's update. And now we're left with this amazing home. This is really the best home environment for the Pico Neo 3 link, I must admit, where you can basically see earth and it's so close to you it's almost as if it's about to engulf you in one mouthful but it doesn't look disproportionate it looks very good it's just that it's very close you could almost jump out and start flying towards the actual planet it would be awesome if it actually could be rotating slowly of course uh, as an mp4 file but of course that would add a lot of different uh, it would be a bigger file size, so perhaps it would create some latency inside of the home. Now, what else can I tell you? Well, there are some slight little tangent, jagged things that you can see moving on the floor. I wouldn't say it's 100% crisp, the floor. I would say it's about 95% crisp. Uh, and also, you can't sit on the couch. It'd be great to have the option to sit on the couch, of course. And then one day as you walk around, you know, being able to pick up objects would be fantastic or putting things on a little bit like the Rift Home on, uh, you know, I think the Rift Home is absolutely amazing. So one day, hopefully, standalone, um, you know, standalone VR headsets will be able to create a home environment where we don't have to worry so much about 
how things take so much space, 3D models, we'll be able to upload them inside, have the holographic telepresence conferences inside of the home, you know, all these kind of things will be absolutely amazing. Of course, this is a very basic home, but it doesn't look half bad. It looks pretty good. It's very comfortable inside of here, I must admit. Now, my IPD at the moment, if I just remove my headset very quickly, I will just tell you that my IPD at the moment is... 69 at the moment, so I'm actually on the the outer the outer version of the headset. Sorry, 58 for me is the most comfortable. Uh, if I put it to 69, oh, oh, I told you in part one yesterday what would occur about the facial interface. So do go and check out part one video because there's a lot of good things happening over there, a lot of good tips and tricks. So do go and check out part one as I talk a lot about the hardware aspect, uh, you know, whether this headset has what it needs. All right, so let me put the IPD back. So for me, 58 is absolutely perfect. Everything is proportionate. And if I put it to 69, then nothing is proportionate. In fact, it feels very much like cross-eyed. Uh, everything is kind of blurry. It takes a while for my for my eyes to adjust to everything. It's just a very strange feeling when I'm at 69. And then let me choose also, uh, you know, let me look at it from the uh, the IPD, which is the smallest one. Let me just bring them in. There we go. And when it's in completely, it looks okay for me. It's bearable. It's just that the field of view on the side get cut. So now what you do need to know, however, is that in the Pico Neo 3 Pro is that in the settings, there is an option uh, to turn off what we call optimization for the actual graphics. And when you turn that off, basically what will occur is that you won't see any color bleeding of any kind. Now in the Pico Neo 3 Link, you don't have this option to be able to do this, which basically means that depending on where you're looking, for example, if I look completely to the front, um, now on the headset, what will happen is on the right-hand side or the left-hand side, if I was to look to the earth here, actually it's more on the right-hand side, not on the left-hand side, funny enough. Um, on the sides of the actual, where it says device info on the side of the rectangle, I will actually see some color bleeding, including some green and also device info. The actual letters will also have some color bleeding, which are green. If I was to position my eyeball here without moving my head itself. So if I just look here, uh, you know, once I look straight towards it, then the color bleeding is gone. For the earth, it looks okay. If I was to know, I also see some green around the edges of the earth as well. And then when I look straight, it looks blue once again. So I'm not quite sure I can show this to you from the recording inside of the headset. Um, but basically, that's what it looks like when I look, you know, inside with my eyes. Then that's what I will actually see. I will actually see some color bleeding happening here so other than that the home is very comfortable no issue whatsoever um as you can see you know i can move my my controllers there's no issue with the tracking inside uh nothing that's going on you know no rotation problems or whatever it might be if i leave the controllers like this for whatever amount of seconds or minutes or whatever it might be um you know they don't stick there's no sticking involved yeah everything is tracking absolutely perfectly there's no issues whatsoever all right so the other thing that i can talk to you about is actually the actual library itself now it's very easy to be able to browse everything i like how the fact that um you know you can filter everything by price from low to high or high to low latest published uh you can also filter by all paid or free which i think is great um, and then also all the various different experiences as well here. I'm just wondering if you're able to pick up the sound from the TV coming in another room, which is pretty far, um, you know, just to show as to what I was talking about in part one about the microphone. Do go and check out part one, guys, uh, because there's a lot of great tips and tricks there about what it was like when I was using the Pico Neo 3 Link for more than 25 hours. So let's just go into Hitstream. As you can see, it's, uh, you know, very easy to find everything. Now, the only thing about basically what I would say that to me is missing 
um, in the actual app store is the fact that you can't redeem a code. So if you're a friend and you want to buy for another friend, first of all, you can't do that. Or if you want to buy for your family member or a colleague or something, then you can't do that. Um, and also for us content creators, of course, it makes it very, very difficult for us to do or create more content in the future to provide Pico Interactive uh, with the Pico Neo 3 link, more, let's say, publicity, um, you know, in showing everybody how everything works. Because of course, we're not rich YouTubers. Um, and generally speaking, we work in collaboration with the developers to provide us the APK. Of course, you can sideload an APK into here, but generally speaking, developers do not like to do that. The biggest ones anyway, don't like to do that. Um, you know, and it's much easier for us just to redeem the code Boom, install it on the actual uh, phone and then inside of the Pico Neo 3 link and, you know, we're done and then we can move forward, start to create content. And then we can really tell you guys, you know, how it is in terms of our experience using the actual Pico Neo 3 link inside of the Pico Neo 3 link as opposed to, you know, streaming to the PC every single time. So let's first of all, I'm going to show you what it's like to stream a game from the actual Pico Neo 3 Link itself inside. So the app is inside, it's inside of the headset and not streaming from a PC. I'm just saying that this shows you what it's like to use the actual VR experience inside of the headset. The graphics are going to be in a compromised situation because the PCU, uh, sorry, the GPU inside of the headset is not, of course, as great as you know an nvidia card or amd card or whatever it might be on your pc but at the end of the day whew, i'm already feeling it this is the purpose of vr it's re this is a good you know vr training fitness just now and also it's pretty comfortable it's just that the developer didn't spend too much time in making his app um you know super detailed or super developed so it's very basic but at the end of the day the 360 image is not blurry um, I don't see a lot of screen door effects, um, you know, all these kind of different things. But let's go inside of the actual Steam VR now just to show you the differences between an app like this inside of the headset and then looking at things from the PC VR's perspective as the headset will now become a display and not the actual uh, GPU processor for the actual game itself. So let's go into Steam VR. See you there. All right, so on to the good stuff. Now, there are two machines that I tried um, during my testing period during the week with the Pico Neo 3 Link. The first one was the G7 HP Fury, the ZenBook. Now, the latest one is their G8. So, but the G7, it works really, really well, especially when you're near the router. And it's great to have the portability, of course. And the other machine is my desktop, which is an i7 9700K RTX 2070, Hero Maximus 11 motherboard. So not the most of high-end PCs. My PC is, I would say, a good two years old, going on now to a three-year-old. PC, the latest RTX, of course, is a 380 or 390. And I don't have a chipset with an AMD, so I can't give you my feedback based on that for the moment. All right, so we're inside the population one. As I said, I'm streaming completely wirelessly to the PC away from everything. And it says camera data error recovering. Okay, so there are some tracking issues right now as I'm trying to stream to the PC. As you can see, I'm standing exactly at the same part as I was earlier when inside of, you know, using the app inside of the actual headset, I had no issues. But now that I'm away from the router, it seems that perhaps the headset needs a bit more time to settle down and pick up everything it needs before, you know, things are normal. So there's a little bit of latency. I have to say it doesn't like it whatsoever. Uh, and then I will do another test later when I'm next to the actual router to show you the actual difference. Because at the moment, I'm quite away from the router. As I said, I'm in another room. I'm about 15 meters away, I would say, with the door closed in between. And there's definitely some crackling on the sound. I don't know whether you can hear it. So if you're, if you're away from the router, then this is what to be expected. As you can see, there's latency with my controllers. In fact, they're going in different directions. My controller is going up whilst the hands inside the game are going down and vice versa. So it creates some issues there. But in terms of the graphics, well, there's still some, of course, there's going to be compromises when you stream wirelessly to your computer. For example, we see some uh, jagged edges around, around the sides. 
but generally speaking, the clarity, I keep getting a camera error for the tracking. The, um, the clarity at the back of the actual graphics are very clear. All right, let me just, uh, what I'm going to do now, now because it's, the, it's, it keeps asking me to recover the tracking and also one of my hands disappeared. Okay, it's back now. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do now as a test is I'm going to go back into the software, get out of Steam VR, and then change the settings so that basically it's on medium or minimum size, just to show you the differences if you still have this issue from the maximum resolution to the minimum resolution. So let's just do that right now. Okay, so we're back inside of Population 1. Now, the first thing is, of course, as I just mentioned just now, let me just equip this, claim this. All right, there we go. Close that. So the first thing, as I mentioned just now, is that there's a little bit more, you know, uh, compromises in terms of the headset, but I'm still having the tracking issue, unfortunately. Although now it's there's much less latency. As you can see, there's much less latency. The controllers are responding much better because we're putting less stress on the actual image compression as it's more compressed now compared to earlier as the settings are on low settings now. So now in terms of the tracking, it's much, much, much better. I'm still from time to time getting an error message to say that it's not tracking to my headset, but I think this could actually be due to my air conditioning. Let me just turn off my air con. There we go. I think it's not good to have your air con running right under you. Uh, for the air as it can break the airflow of the tracking. Yeah, now it's no problem whatsoever. So what we can do is we can just go inside of the... Uh, let's change the squads. Let's go to training park. Let's go there. Accept. Let's go. All right, so it's going to place me inside of a match. I mean, it's perfectly acceptable. Yes, there are compromises. Yes, it's true that the, the clarity is not super clear. Also, the other thing you can do is go to the settings here, go to general, and then make sure you're on infernal or ultra or fast. So for us, we're on infernal, no issues there. You can also, of course, change the uh, settings of your mic. So I'm going to change it to this and then change it to the Pico Streamer. There we go. So the clarity, as I mentioned, isn't, you know, 100% inside of the headset for sure. Definitely some compromises over there, like at the back there, I can't see him very clearly. He's a bit blurry. Just Hello, keep. can you hear me? Testing microphone. Whoa. Hello. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Nice. I can hear you, buddy. Awesome. How are you guys doing? First time using voice chat, eh? Good. Good. Is, it the, is it your first time using voice chat? Yeah, it's my very first time using voice chat with this headset here, yes. What type of headset are you using? I'm using the Pico Neo 3 Link. So in terms of shooting stuff, no problem. No issues with the tracking whatsoever. Everything's good. And then also if you want to reload the tracking, no issues whatsoever. It's quite hard to see the one at the further back over there. That's quite difficult. It looks kind of blurry and non-existent. The one over there where it says number one there, as you can see, just hit it. But it's still playable, no problems about that, just some compression, and I am getting the uh, tracking loss from time to time. So I think this has got to do not with my aircon, but basically because of the actual uh, latency that's going on for the streaming, because I'm not sitting or, or standing right next to my router. So it will create some issues. So it is recommended when you're using the wireless streamer to be sitting right next to your actual router as much as possible. Whether the DP4K cable can completely replace the HP Reverb G2's experience or whether, and also if you're a current HP Reverb G2 person, whether it's time to put this down and switch to your Pico Neo 3 Link because the DP4K cable it's quite of a beast, but let me give you the pros and cons before I give you my final thoughts at the end of this video. Now, the first thing, um, you know, is that when you put the cable on the headset, now you do need to use a screwdriver. Now that is pretty annoying because if you misplace a screwdriver, and I have done that a couple of times, um, you're stuck. The headset is stuck, 
you know, the cable stuck on the headset, you cannot remove it. It's that simple. Perhaps you could use a coin or something. I don't know. I haven't tried, but at the end of the day, you have to use an accessory to put that. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that um, the clarity in the headset now, it is pretty good. It is pretty good, guys. I have to say that compared to the HP Reverb G2, ooh, if you've never put an H HP Reverb G2 on your face ever, then you're definitely going to have a good experience putting the Pico Neo 3 Link on your head for the first time. Ooh, but the con is that, first of all, I have noticed that a lot of the models inside of the games using the Pico Neo 3 Link DP cable creates some kind of magnification. For example, the hands on a lot of different models or avatars are blown up that they look huge they look massive like the hands don't look like the the size of a normal hand using the hp reverb g2 also when i was in tribe xr i noticed that the uh, console the deck of the actual uh, tribe xr dj consoles are also they just feel larger they feel bigger um now when you're streaming wirelessly it's not that so noticeable even though it is definitely also a little bit bigger um like the hands are bigger some of the models the 3d models will be bigger it's not super noticeable when you're using the wireless streaming software which is why i like to use the pico neo 3 streaming wirelessly when i'm next to the router for example population one or something when i don't specifically want to be playing vr at the same place all the time because it can get a little bit stale for me a little bit boring so i do need that little bit of uh differentiating kind of aspect of gameplay and also when i go back to my hp then it looks amazing again so it keeps me refreshed in terms of my experiences in virtual reality however when i'm using the dp4k cable well that creates an issue for me it's weird um the other thing that you need to understand is that now the the screen door effect which is all these little lines that you would see when you put the the headset on is definitely if you've never been in VR before, you will not notice it using the DP4K cable. It's virtually not there. However, for those who use an HP Reverb G2, you're definitely gonna notice the difference because um, the HP Reverb G2 screen door effect is even more powerful and less noticeable, which means that when you put the DP4K cable on with the Pico Neo 3 link, you are going to notice it. You are going to notice it and the thing is now it's very thin very thin lines so it's barely noticeable but you're going to see these thin lines moving around in some kind of i don't know it's, it's you're going to notice it so even though it's not protruding it's not a big deal it's not a big deal it's definitely a very very comfortable experience by all means but you will notice it nonetheless which means that you will want to put your hp reverb g2 back on for sure. So, personally speaking, I don't use the Pico Neo 3 Link for the DP4K cable experience. I don't. But if I had never used VR before, I would be more than happy. So, I'm just giving you that feedback from my perspective. The other thing is that not all the games, and do hit the notification bell after you subscribe, as I will do another video about this, not all the games are compatible. First of all, Walking Dead Saint and Sinners is not compatible with the Pico Neo 3 Link. Stride, which is an amazing VR app, they just had a uh, multiplayer co-op uh, update recently, doesn't work on the Pico Neo 3 Link DP cable either, or even the streaming. Um, also, other apps like Omega Pilot doesn't work also with the Pico Neo 3 Link uh, DP cable either. So there's a whole bunch of other VR titles that are not compatible with the DP4K cable simply because, and this could also be the reason why some of the 3D models appear to be blown up or out of proportion, some of you know the models inside of the games, is because most undoubtedly the developers perhaps have not reached out yet to Pico Interactive ByteDance or vice versa. They haven't actually reached out to those developers to make sure that the compatibility of the apps are updated to the headset at this moment in time. That is most probably why there are some issues there. Even in Steam VR, when you go inside a Steam VR home, you will notice that all the panels just feel much more blown up 
than compared to the HP Reverb D2. So I'm just giving you that feedback. However, the graphics are perfectly good, perfectly great, but I didn't notice some of these differences inside of the Pico Neo 3 Pro, which is kind of odd, I think. But perhaps, um, you know, I need to go back in again and see. But yeah, generally speaking, with the Pico Neo 3 Pro, I don't find those kind of things. But the differences between the Pico Neo 3 Pro and the Pico Neo 3 Link is that you won't have as many apps, you won't have as many, as much gameplay inside of the, the Link that you would with the Pro. So undoubtedly, don't get the Pro uh, at this moment in time. The Link will offer much better experience than the Pico Neo 3 Pro for sure. So I'm just giving you my feedback in terms of Playing with it wirelessly, it is definitely a great headset to work with, to play with if you're near the actual router. But the moment that you're away, as I mentioned before, it's definitely, you're gonna have some issues with the latency, the tracking, and also the, the HMD is gonna lose itself. It's gonna go black with a pop-up saying, we can't find your play space, all these kind of things. Now, the other thing that I can tell you in terms of using the DP4K cable, for example, when I was inside of Shooty Skies, I did lose at one point, it didn't happen very often out of my whole 30 hours, I have to admit, but I, there is a point where I lost tracking with the rotation of the actual controller, it was just stuck in one specific rotation axis and it wouldn't want to move in, a, in another axis and also I couldn't move it around. It was stuck for about a minute or so. That was actually a very, very strange moment there, I have to admit. And then also sometimes the actual play space gets lost as well, I had that happen quite often uh, in uh, contractors as well as VR chat where suddenly Everything would go black and then the headset would ask me to redo my play space. This happened quite a few times with the DP4K cable. So I have to admit that even though the graphics are really good and the play, the gameplay, you know, inside is more than good enough, I did have some issues. There are some teething issues here and there at the end of the day. And also, as I mentioned, the developers need to get in touch with Link, uh, with Pico uh, Interactive and Pico Neo Interactive ByteDance needs to get in touch with all developers so they can update all their games to be proportionate inside of the actual headset itself. So in conclusion, should you get the Pico Neo 3 Link and put down your HP Reverb D2 or if you're a brand new you know, person enthusiast into VR, should you get, you know, if you want PC VR and you want the best optimum graphics that virtual reality can provide to you today, should you go for the HP Reverb D2 or simply go for the Pico Neo 3 Link? Well, at the end of the day, I say go for the HP Reverb G2 because of all these little bugs at the moment and also the fact that there are so many apps that are not compatible in Steam VR with the Pico Neo 3 Link at this moment in time. And do hit the notification bell after you subscribe as I will do separate videos listing all the various different games that are not compatible yet with the Pico Neo 3 Link that I think you should go with the HP Reverb G2. However, if you just want to have an experience in VR and you want the portability and you're not bothered about streaming things to the PC whatsoever, should you go for the MetaQuest or the or the Pico Neo 3 Link, then go for the Pico Neo 3 Link. Why? Because it's not going to record, take all your data and all this kind of stuff and manipulate society and government elections and all this kind of stuff. At the end of the day, the Pico Neo 3 Link is a much safer and a much more, I would say, green headset for the purpose of the development of our industry. This is a much, much safer headset, which is one of the most, if not the most, uh, I would say, most well-known headset in the enterprise other than HTC. So this tells you a lot of good stuff. So guys, thank you for, for watching today's video. I hope I gave you some good insights. Do make sure to stick around for future videos by hitting the notification bell after you subscribe as I will give you more insights about the Pico Neo 3 link and leave below any comments. You know, let me know what VR app do you, are you curious that doesn't work with the actual Pico itself? Let me know, I'll do some testing and I'll let you know in future videos. Until next time guys, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.